In the last episode, we went up against a strange and colorful villain. In this episode, we have another villain to contend with. Uh, this one is uh, kind of strange. He calls himself the Hangman, and he has Captain America embroiled in a murder mystery. So let's get some background here. The story revolves around the death of Dr. Vardoff, who has invented a special brand of unbreakable twine. This twine could be used for countless purposes and is worth literally limitless money. Everybody wants this twine and now Dr. Vardoff has been found hung by the hangman. But who is the identity of this villainous hangman? Well, we have some suspects here. Uh, the jealous lab assistant, the mafia enforcer trying to collect on debts, and a rival businessman who wants to capitalize on this new invention. So who is the hangman? Well, we're going to have to read through the story and find out. Immediately we can see that the good doctor is having trouble finishing his invention. He's calling this miracle twine Super Silk, and he wants to produce it for the masses, but people keep showing up to interrupt his work. A rival businessman named Dino Cardi, and a mafia enforcer who doesn't quite give her name? The third visitor is Major Crane from Camp Lehigh. He wants uh, some of the good Doctor Super Silk to help build a better parachute. Except this time, the Doctor is not annoyed. He's open to the idea of helping the army. However, outside we can see that Cap and Bucky are watching the lab along with various other mysterious characters. Who are they? Gangsters? International spies? It seems like just about everyone has their eyes on the Doc's laboratory. Cap and Bucky return to the lab at night to pick up the parachute, but the hangman is already there. He uses the super silk to create a noose, uh, which he uses to murder the doctor. Then he starts a fire to cover his tracks and makes his escape with the doctor's work. At this point in the story, man, I was hooked. It's a great introduction to the character. Hangman shows up and he is vile. He moves with a purpose, getting in there, doing the crime, and getting out without much shenanigans at all. He completely succeeds in taking the formula, which I love because it makes me genuinely curious as to what his identity is. Who, who is he? I want to know. Cap and Bucky are hot on the trail. They corner the hangman and they try to block his escape. They knock out his thugs with a couple of thunderous blows, but the hangman is too clever even for them. He uses some super silk, of all things, to knock them out. Cap and Bucky awaken only to find that a mob has formed around the burning building and without giving it any thought they decide that Cap started the fire and they need to lynch him for his crimes. Right now. I guess they don't know who Captain America is but it doesn't matter because he easily escapes with Bucky. I also want to emphasize this panel here where Bucky says, I'm right behind you Kazar, which is a reference to a different Golden Age hero in the Marvel Universe. It's an awesome reference, which, you know, didn't always happen very often in the Golden Age. I, I wanted to point that out. Later, Cap and Bucky have recovered uh, just fine, and they are desperate to get back at the hangman. But first, they need to go back to the smoldering remains of the doctor's lab and look for some clues. When they get there, however, they are not alone. Cap and Bucky are being watched by some unknown assailant. Cap squares off against the attacker, and it turns out to be none other than the doctor's assistant. His name is Ludwig. Except he claims that he is not the one who killed Vardoff, and he is just there looking for clues, trying to help. Then suddenly, a noose from the other end of the wall chokes Ludwig into submission. On the other end of the wall, Cap finds the Mafia Enforcer, but even she claims that she isn't the hangman, and... Uh, I believe her since the hangman is obviously a male figure. That eliminates two of the three suspects. The only one left is the man with the monocle. The rival businessman who wanted the super silk for his own greedy gains. Captain America has a hunch and he goes to the morgue to take a look at the burned body of Dr. Vardoff. Only to find that the corpse has a glass eye. But he didn't have a glass eye. The body in the morgue is actually the Monocle Man, which means the true identity of the Hangman must actually be... Just then, the Hangman himself shows up and he uses his super silk to capture Cap and Bucky. He takes them to a hideout on the edge of town. He plans to get rid of them by dissolving them in acid. But Cap is already one step ahead. He uses the acid to dissolve his chains and then breaks free and then defeats all the Hangman's thugs. Cornered with no way to escape, Cap smashes into the hangman himself and reveals his secret identity. 
Finally, we can see that the hangman was none other than Dr. Vardoff himself. It turns out that he didn't die in the fire. He didn't die at all. He explains that he discovered the monocle uh, man in his lab one night trying to steal the formula. Uh, then he went mad and killed him and burned the lab down. He did it to maintain his privacy over his invention. If everybody thought he was dead, he would be free to work. As one last act of penance, he entrusts the formula to Cap and requests that it be delivered to the army for safe usage. Then he commits suicide by showering himself in acid. Cap and Bucky are touched by the gesture and decide to keep his identity secret in honor of the good doctor's name. I love acid deaths, that trope is great. What is it about the Golden Age and their obsession with acids? They must have just thought that stuff was like really cool back then. Either way, it completely dissolves the body of the good doctor, thus ending the menace of the enigmatic hangman forever. And I have to admit, I really enjoyed this story. I like the mystery stories. I figured it was Dr. Vardoff the whole time. I mean, I knew. Uh, there, I knew there was going to be a twist. There's always a twist when it comes to these kinds of things. Unfortunately, you can see them coming from a mile away, but at least the story throws a few curveballs in there. And Captain America is generally a good character to handle mystery stories because he exists in a world of spies and espionage. It really is a match made in heaven. So, this concludes this series on Cap's early adventures. Uh, after this, Cap is going to make his way away from New York and start getting into more international crimes. So in my upcoming series, we're going to focus on Cap's world tour where he goes from country to country battling dastardly villains from different cultures. Anyway, yeah, you don't want to miss out on any of the colorful characters that Cap comes in contact with. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this episode. If you like reading this comic and you want to read more with me, uh, then why not like this video or subscribe to my channel. Also, if you really want to help out, why not consider donating to my Patreon. Uh, until next time, nerds, stay heroic.